What is going on guys? Stefan here with you, s &E's Garage. And in today's video, we're gonna show you why this is one of the worst used cars you can buy if you don't do your homework and you don't do your due diligence. So many moons ago, we made a video featuring my personal 2007 Camry with this engine in it. And that video has been one of the most controversial videos that I have ever posted. Uh, mostly we have a bunch of Toyota fanboys saying, oh, you're wrong, the 2AZ is a great engine, this, that, and the other thing. When in fact, I myself am a Toyota Lexus fanboy, so you're arguing with somebody of the same mindset as you. But with that being said, this engine was installed in these Camrys and many other Toyotas from 2002 all the way until around 2010, 2011. And unfortunately, it's not the best engine in the world. Now, when it's running good, it's a great engine. Mine, I have 220 something thousand miles on, still runs great. Um, it did have the recall done for the oil burning issue and my head bolts are still holding strong. But neither one of those things can be said about this specific car. So let's check it out. So this 07 Camry presents itself very nicely other than the fact that it looks like it's been sitting under a tree for a year. The interior is rather clean. Uh, the dashboard is a little bit weathered. You can see here it is starting to crack and fade a little bit, which is unfortunately typical with these cars, especially when they're left in the sun. This car has 189,000 miles on it, but the engine is very hurt. If we fire it up, number one, it's got an exhaust leak, but number two, it's, it's burning coolant and it's burning oil, and it's got some pretty nasty misfires. So let's fire it up and let you hear it. Now you hear how rough it's running. It is not running very well at all. It's got an exhaust leak, that's rather obvious, but we have no coolant in the overflow bottle, and we have pressure in the cooling system. And on top of that, the person that I bought this car off of did inform me that they are putting about a quart of oil in it every month. So it's burning oil, it's burning coolant, it's got a misfire, it's got a check engine light, we're gonna go ahead and scan it, we're gonna look at some codes, and mechanically, this car is totaled. Now, just because it's mechanically totaled does not mean that we are not going to go ahead and fix this thing. We did pick this up. We did buy it. We paid $1,000 for this car. I think if we put in some time and some money, clean it up really nice, and do something with this engine, I think we have a $4,500 to $5,000 car here, uh, especially in New Jersey. Just judging by the shape that it is in, you'll see the body is nice and straight. There are no real big dings, no real big dents, and... It's red, which isn't really my favorite color in the world, but it is what it is. The car is pretty straight for what it is. Now, if you are in the market for one of these cars and you are trying to buy one or you're looking at one, there's a couple of things you want to do. Number one, pop the hood. The first thing you want to do is look at that coolant overflow bottle. If it's low or if it's empty, suspect that there may be something going on with the head gasket or the head bolts that hold the cylinder head to the engine. Second, pull the dipstick, check the level, make sure it's not milky. In this case, the oil is full, it is not milky, but usually when these heads fail or they lift, they don't mix coolant and oil, they burn coolant because it, it blows right around the coolant jacket. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do, run the car facts, look through the service history, see if this car had the recall done for the oil burning issue. Unfortunately for us, this car is a double whammy because it's burning coolant and it's burning oil. So we're at a point here, if we pull this cylinder head and helicoil the holes that are likely stripped to accept some new threads, by the time we're done doing all that work and we put it back together, we're still gonna have an engine that is burning oil. And I really don't know that I wanna pass that on to somebody. So we're gonna have a couple of different options here. We can pull the engine completely out, helicoil the block, replace the pistons and rings, and slap it back together. 
or we can go ahead and order or purchase a new or a remanufactured short block that will come with a new or remanufactured block. It will come with new pistons, it will come with new rings, it will come with new bearings, and we can just slap this head right back on it. So we have some options. Let me know down in the comment section below what you would rather see. Do you want us to tear into this engine and completely fix this short block, or would you rather see us pull the heads, put a new short block in it, and then um, dissect the old one and see what exactly happened? Now another thing you're going to want to look at when you're buying these cars is I always like to look in the trunk because the trunk's going to tell you the full story. Most people don't always keep their trunks clean and you're likely going to find something in the trunk that is going to kind of give you a hint on what's going on with the car. If you open the trunk and you find an almost empty bottle of coolant and some engine oil, you know, okay, they're putting coolant in this thing a lot and they're putting oil in it a lot. And not only that, they're putting 7-Eleven <laughs> oil in the thing. So this thing, like I said, very hurt. Let's go ahead, let's get it up in the air. Let's check out, oh wow, that trunk springs are really good. I might have to take them. <laughs> let's go ahead, let's get it up in the air. Let's look underneath and see if we can see anything else. All right guys, so we got this very seriously hurt 07 Camry here up in the air. And what we're seeing under here is actually very um, unremarkable. Here we can see some very new front brakes with a ton of pad life left. The rotors look almost brand new. We can see our axles here are not leaking. There is a slight seepage there from the axle seal, but that is to be expected on a car with 180,000 miles on it. You see again, very light seepage here from the oil pan, nothing making it on the ground again totally normal for a car of this age but it is pretty amazing that under here looks as clean as it is for the age and the mileage on the car let's see this passenger axle here everything looks good uh no real major rust here on the body the exhaust does look a little bit crusty again northeast car pretty common this flex pipe has been replaced before, but it is leaking. You can see a little bit of the exhaust vapor leaking out from there. As we make our way back, you can see these back tires are pretty well worn. It is probably gonna need a set of tires. Maybe we'll throw some used tires on it. They're not so bad in the front, but new tires or newer tires are always a selling point. You see the body plugs that are supposed to be in here are missing, whoever PDI'd this car. Unfortunately, must not have cared. Oh, we got one. I'm lying to you. Only one of them is missing. And the back suspension here, struts aren't leaking. Uh, we might need some back brakes. We're going to have to pull these wheels to inspect. Uh, but that's not what this video is for. We're just giving it a quick once over. And I'm liking what I see under here. This car definitely has some good bones. And I definitely think, like I said, is, is worth fixing for us if we put some time and some money in it. I think we'll have a a real winner here. I did off camera just go ahead and shake down the front end. Ball joints are tight, tie rod ends are tight. Our steering rack is not leaking and again I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. So now that we know what's going on under the hood and underneath the car and what kind of shape the rest of the car's in, let's go ahead and pull some codes here and see what we got. So this is the Xtool D8. This is the scanner here that we use mostly on the channel. Um, it works great for us. It does what it needs to do and like I said Let's go ahead and scan the codes Now you can already see it is very not happy We have 12 codes in the engine control and the transmission control module We have four codes in cruise control We have a code in the ABS and we have a couple of codes in the tire pressure monitoring system So overall the car is not happy now. Here's what we got we have a P0300, which is a random multiple misfire, followed by a P0302 and a 303, which is cylinder two and cylinder three. Now those two cylinders here are dead center of the engine, two and three. And that goes with the head bolt issue because it's usually the center bolts on the back side of the engine, or technically it would be the side of the engine, the intake manifold side that usually pull out. So that theory is, is becoming more and more prevalent here as we see that it is the two center cylinders that are misfiring. 
Uh, so in my mind, that's again, when I scanned it, that, that was immediately what came to mind is that the, the head bolts are gone. Uh, we had a P0420, so it's gonna need a catalytic converter. Again, that goes with the oil burning issue that these cars have. That cat is likely oil fouled and burnt up, so it's probably gonna need a catalytic converter. We'll see when we pull this apart, we'll kind of shine a light in there. We'll see if we can try to clean it up, but there's a pretty good shot that we're gonna be putting a catalytic converter on this car. Luckily for us, this is not a California car. That is another good thing for us because the California cat is quite a bit more expensive than the 49 state. Uh, so that, like I said, that is good for us. Now we also have some other codes here. We have a P0128, which is the thermostat not coming up to, uh, you know, it's not letting the engine warm up correctly. Um, that is one of those things where while I'm in here, I'm gonna put a thermostat in it. it doesn't make sense not to. So we don't really have to worry about that. Um, we'll fix that while we're in there and then we have some other codes here malfunction of engine control system That is actually a very common code with Toyota's of this uh, vintage when the engine light comes on As soon as you start driving the car It'll trip the ABS and the VSC light It does that to scare you into taking the car into the dealership because usually the more lights that you see on the dash The more likely you're gonna be to bring the car in so like I said we spent $1,000 on this thing. We're taking a little bit of a risk here. Um, it's very, obviously very hurt. There's definitely something going on, multiple things going on inside of this engine. And uh, we're gonna get down to the bottom of it. So in the next video I do on this car, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna check compression, just because I'm curious. And we're gonna check leak down. I'm willing to bet that I have leak down between cylinders two and three, meaning they're probably leaking down into each other. And I probably have some leak down into the cooling system. We're gonna figure that out. And that'll really be our nail in the coffin. If we have leak down there, we know that, yeah, this thing's definitely shot. Um, and then we can take it one step further and do a block test or a head gasket test and stick the thing on the radiator if the shit turns blue or yellow, whatever it is. Uh, if there's exhaust gases coolant or, uh, present in the coolant. So there's a couple things we have planned here. Stay tuned. We're gonna start with the diagnosis process, really get into it make sure before i give this thing the sign of the cross we're going to make sure that it is definitely um our issue but like i said all of these hints that i'm seeing the low coolant uh the coolant and oil sitting in the trunk the codes for cylinders two and three it's looking more and more like that's going to be our problem and it really comes down to do we want to fix the engine that's in the car or do we want to replace the short block, start fresh with an engine that does not burn any oil and does not have any issues with the block? So again, please like, share, and subscribe. You guys watching make these videos uh, possible. You made buying this car possible, and I hope you join me on the journey to getting this thing on the road.